local church is devastated after one of their workers is killed and police say the suspect is her husband. The church told us he also worked there. 41 Action News reporter Andres Gutierrez live at the church tonight with more. Andres. My ministry, um, healing is one of the things that God has called me to and so. The latest victims of domestic violence Prince George's County has lost three women to such crimes in just the past two days. Their number so many are fighting to change, but tonight there are no answers for the family of Tarika Jones and Jalissa Walls Harris. Only more questions. Based on this case, we would be traveling to Cheverly, Maryland. Not just came home and heard gunshot. Ladies there, you know, in the apartment. They are on the ground. Because the shots I heard that woke me up. <laughs> this is what happens when you don't want to talk to him. This is what happens when you lock yourself in a car to be away from him. Love can turn deadly in an instant. In this video, we'll uncover five horrifying cases where boyfriends unleashed murder, brutally killing their girlfriends over a simple argument. Viewer discretion is strongly advised. These cases are disturbing and graphic. Two lives lost to domestic violence, three more lives forever changed. And tonight, ABC7 has learned the man blamed for the brutal crime should have been behind bars. Kevin Reynolds was locked up last week on charges of domestic violence. Yesterday, though, police say he shot and killed Tarika Jones and Jalisa Harris. Our first case is the horrifying murder of Stephanie Ingram, a woman brutally murdered boyfriend after joining OnlyFans. Have y'all ever just laid in the bed and just be stuck? Like just thinking, thinking and thinking some more. Your thoughts all over the place because you got so much going on that you can't even have a solid thought about one thing. Stephanie Dominic Ingram was only 30. A mother of four, she had fought hard to claw her way out of an abusive relationship. Life in Aubrey, Texas wasn't perfect, but she was trying. Then she met him, Anthony Jal Thornton. At 32, Anthony seemed like a savior. Stephanie had been through hell, and Anthony promised something different, something better. He showered her with love. He promised to love her, treat her better, and even care for her children. Stephanie wanted so badly to believe him, but Anthony was wearing a mask. And then be wear have all this on your plate, and then be going through the worst breakup. So now you have to take on all of the responsibilities. You got to handle everything on your plate. And then you still got to be nice to the person that hurt you. You still got to overcompensate for the people that just can't for one reason or the next. It just, it just really baffles me. It's like black women alone carry enough on their shoulders. Behind closed doors, the cracks started to show. Thornton was jealous, possessive. He didn't like that Stephanie was rebuilding her life, making her own decisions, finding her independence. Stephanie had turned to OnlyFans as a way to support her kids and herself. It wasn't an easy choice, and she knew people judged her for it. But she was trying, and she was honest about it, unafraid to say that she was working to stand on her own feet. Anthony didn't see it that way. To him, it was a threat. As the weeks passed, his jealousy turned into something darker. I'm so over this. I'm so over it, like, for real. And it just sucks, like, you literally just lay here in the bed for I was just thinking, because you don't even want to talk to nobody. Like, you don't even want to really, really vent to somebody. Because all they're all they going to do is just use it against you anyway. Not even a person you, you think you love. It all came to a breaking point on August 20th, 2023, in a quiet neighborhood in Savannah, Texas. Police were called to the house that evening. Inside, they found a scene out of a nightmare. Stephanie lay dead, her lifeless body bearing gunshot wounds to her head and neck. Anthony's body was slumped nearby. He had turned the gun on himself after murdering a woman he claimed to love. Their infant child was found in the home, unharmed, but forever traumatized. Okay, so yeah, the update. The uh, OnlyFans page is going up. Like, it's going up. Um, me and this baby daddy with this whole back and forth shit, Like, 
I don't know. I don't know, because y'all already know. Now he want to be nice and all that stuff, right? Is it going to last? Is it going to last? Like, hmm, we're going to see. You know what I'm saying? We're going to see. Y'all know how that, that type of stuff go. But subscribe. Look, look uh, for the link in the bio. It wasn't hard to piece together what had happened. Anthony's rage had finally boiled over. Jealousy, possession, control. He couldn't handle Stephanie's behavior, and in the end, he chose to end her life rather than let her live it without him. The aftermath was devastating. Stephanie's family was shattered, left to mourn not just her loss, but the violent way it happened. Four children were left without their mother, and the world was left with another chilling reminder of the dangers women face when trapped in toxic, possessive relationships. Oh, my feelings are so, so hurt. My feelings are so hurt. Like, then it's like when you don't have nobody that just really understand. Like, now, if you thought Stephanie's case was disturbing, brace yourself for the chilling story of Tanisha Harris, a devoted wife tragically murdered after discovering that her pastor husband was hiding secret gay affairs. Local church is devastated after one of their workers is killed and police say the suspect is her husband. The church told us he also worked there. 41 Action News reporter Andres Gutierrez live at the church tonight with more. Andres. Mike, we've learned the suspect, Robert Harris, and the victim, his wife, Tanisha Harris, first met here at this church where they did work together. Tanisha Harris was a devoted associate pastor known for her compassion and strong faith. But in January 2018, her life ended in betrayal and violence at the hands of her husband, Robert Lee Harris, a man she loved. Tanisha and Robert's marriage seemed picture perfect. Married in 2016, they served together in their Kansas City church, inspiring others with their faith. But behind the facade, their relationship was unraveling. Tanisha discovered Robert's shocking secret. He was having affairs with men in their congregation. Hurt and angry, she intended to confront and expose him. But Robert had other plans. Police discovered her body overnight in this Raymore field, miles away from her home in Overland Park. There's no way to even wrap one's mind around that, to even see that that would be in the realm of the possible. It doesn't seem real. It seems like a very bad nightmare. January 8th, 2018. Neighbors heard loud, disturbing screams coming from their apartment. When police arrived, Robert assured them everything was fine, but it wasn't. Hours later, investigators found blood evidence in the home and learned Tanisha was missing. Under pressure, Robert confessed. He had strangled her in a fit of rage and disposed of her body to cover his tracks. But that's not all. Her death exposed a darker web of betrayal within their church. A young man named Stephen Jr., who had an affair with Robert, came forward, revealing his lies and double life. Police tell 41 Action News officers initially went to Harris's apartment Monday afternoon after her husband called to report a disturbance. He was home alone at the time. Hours later, the husband once again called police, this time to report Harris missing. Officers say they became suspicious of the 30-year-old man after their interview. During further questioning, he admitted to police he had a role in his wife's disappearance. In 2021, Robert Lee Harris was convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to 50 years in prison without parole. Prosecutors argued his motives were both financial and to silence Tanisha before she could expose his secrets. In the end, Tanisha's story is a chilling reminder of how evil can lurk in the most unexpected places. During the trial, during the trial, many people testified. During the trial, it was exposed that there was a love triangle happening with this particular elder. Let's put up the picture of the young man that publicly identified himself as Stephen Jr. Um, Stephen was one that gave testimony, all right? Several people gave testimony about uh, Harris at trial at the Johnson County District Court, including this young man who testified that he was actually involved in a romantic relationship with the former church elder and army veteran. Third in line, we have the spine chilling story of Yasmeen Williams, a woman murdered by her lover in one of the most gruesome ways imaginable. Man police charged with concealing the body of Yasmeen Williams in a sleeping bag on the sidewalk is now facing upgraded charges of murder. But he continues denying his involvement or even knowing the victim. Now July 5th, 2024, Yasmeen Williams, a 31-year-old criminal justice graduate, was...
murdered, her body wrapped in a sleeping bag and stuffed inside a trash bag left like trash in Kipps Bay, Manhattan. The NYPD determined she had been brutally shot in the head and her death was ruled a homicide. Her horrifying killing shocked her tight-knit community to the core. Just days before her murder, Yasmin was preparing to start a new job at the New York City Housing Authority. She had a bright future ahead of her, and in one fell swoop, it was ripped away. Mr. Williams, whose body was found last Friday, stuffed into a sleeping bag and left out with the trash on East 27th Street. The New York City Medical Examiner's Office determined that she died from a gunshot wound to the head. All right, you found it. It didn't take long before suspicion fell on Chad Irish, a 55-year-old man in a wheelchair who lived in a nearby public housing development. Rumor on the streets was that he and Yasmin were romantically involved. This revelation blindsided Yasmin's family, who said they didn't know Chad. Chillingly, surveillance footage from the night of the murder revealed a man in a wheelchair dragging a large trash bag down the street. This damning evidence made it clearer than ever that Chad was the one responsible. This surveillance video obtained by the New York Post shows a man in an electric wheelchair, believed to be Irish, dragging Williams's body to the curb. When police arrested Chad at his apartment in the Strauss houses, chaos erupted. Dozens of enraged neighbors, including Yasmin's grieving family, swarmed him as he was taken out on a stretcher. Tensions boiled over, with the crowd attacking Chad, punching him, ripping his clothes, and screaming. Yasmin's devastated mother could be heard shouting, you killed my daughter, please kill him. Chad, who has a lengthy criminal record with 21 prior arrests, was charged with crimes related to Yasmin's death, including concealment of a corpse and possession of a weapon. Investigators are still trying to determine where and why Yasmin was killed and whether it happened in Chad's apartment. Did they get into an argument? Was the murder planned? These are questions that remain unanswered. This now viral video shows Irish being apprehended by police outside Nietzsche's Strauss houses earlier this week. A seething crowd descended on him as he was taken into custody while handcuffed to a stretcher. For Yasmin's family, the murder charge is one step toward accountability, but her mother says justice won't be served until the day Irish is sentenced in court. Even Mayor Eric Adams weighed in on the tragedy, calling Yasmin's murder a tragic loss and adding that Chad was lucky the police got involved before the community could bring their own justice. Yasmin's mother spoke for the family, vowing that her daughter's wouldn't get away with it. This is where she grew up. Everybody knows her, she said. To this day, the investigation remains ongoing. Looking for, as Irish was wheeled out of the 13th precinct, he appeared somewhat flustered and confused, but he did not shy away from completely denying his involvement in this. Number four is the heartbreaking murder of Kajavia Globe, another victim who was murdered and stuffed in the trash like she was nothing. Welcome relief tonight for a mother who says her life has been a living hell, waiting for someone to be charged with her daughter's murder. Good evening, I'm Dave Llewellyn. Thanks for joining us on this Saturday evening. A 24-year-old man charged today in the death of Kajavia Globe, whose body was found in a trash can days after her disappearance in December. 24-year-old Kajavia Globe's life ended in unspeakable horror. She was found discarded like garbage, her body stuffed in a dumpster, left on the curb. Loved ones never saw Kajavia after 3 o'clock that day. Then last night, her body was found behind an abandoned house here on Fielding Street near Seven Mile in northwest Detroit. Kajavia was last seen on December 11, 2015. Three days later, her body was discovered in a trash bin behind Brack's home. Instantly, everything about Kajavia's death pointed to 25-year-old Maxwell Brack, her boyfriend. Investigators began piecing together the puzzle, and when a neighbor testified that they saw Maxwell dragging the dumpster around the time of her disappearance, it only confirmed their suspicions. Then, surveillance footage unearthed, showing a man wearing a skeleton mask, using Kajavia's bank card after she went missing. What's more, her abandoned car was found only a few hours before her body turned up. She says Brax was the first name she gave police when she reported Kajavia missing on December 11th. She would learn later a masked man was seen using Kajavia's ATM card in her car that very night. Detectives found Kajavia's body a few days later in a garbage can behind a vacant house on the west side on Fielding. With all the evidence at hand, Maxwell was arrested in February, charged with open murder. She was going for her dream. He saw it. He saw me. He couldn't handle it. 
You know, he didn't, he didn't deserve it. He didn't understand what he had. He wanted to bring her down instead of uplift her. He was no good to her. Uh, he don't care. He ain't show no remorse. He don't care. He killed my baby, and she was so dumb. She loved this monster. September 2066, Maxwell finally faced the court. As the trial unfolded, it painted a horrifying picture of Kajavia and Maxwell's relationship. Kajavia's mother, LaShonda Globe, didn't hold back. She told the court how Maxwell abused and terrorized her daughter, breaking her nose, beating her down, and trying to destroy her spirit. Kajavia, LaShonda said, had finally been breaking free. She covered the tattoo of his name, enlisted in the Navy, and was rebuilding her life. But Maxwell couldn't handle her moving on. He took her life because she was on the road to success, LaShonda said. LaShonda says Kajavia and Brack had a toxic relationship and that a love triangle had reached a boiling point days before she vanished. I didn't care. He destroyed something so beautiful. Just took her life. Like, that's what she really... She went against her mom and kept dealing with you, and it's the type of thing she did. Maxwell denied his guilt, even as the evidence piled up against him. He testified that Kajavia had secretly recorded intimate moments and sent them to one of his other girlfriends, but claimed this didn't anger him. Yet prosecutors painted him as jealous, controlling, and violent, a man who snapped when he realized Kajavia was done with him. During sentencing, Judge Cynthia Gray Hathaway didn't hold back. She dismissed the guidelines recommending 46 years as not sufficient and handed Maxwell a 70 to 100 year sentence, driven in part by the smug smirk he displayed in earlier court proceedings. The last 10 years of that sentence, that's for the smile, Judge Hathaway said. Guys, good afternoon to you. The motive for this murder was a jilted ex-lover's jealousy, and uh, he often smiled smugly in court, but today, noticeably, there was no smiling. Maxwell Brack stood as he was sentenced to 70 to 100 years in prison. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Convicted of second degree murder and the death of his former girlfriend, Kajavia Globe. Her body found in a trash can in Detroit last winter. Kajavia's family wept with relief at the sentence. For her mother, the anger and pain were raw. He's a monster, LaShonda said. When he put my daughter in that dumpster, it meant something because I always told him he was trash. In court, Globe's sister began the impact statements. I never had to live without my sister, and it's awful. And her mom, LaShonda Globe, didn't hold back. He was abusive. He broke her nose. He was taking her down. He was destroying her life. When she decided to say goodbye to Maxwell, he took her life. Our last case involves the brutal killing of not one victim, but two. This is the story of Tarika Jones and Jaleesa Harris, two sisters who were violently murdered by a toxic ex-boyfriend. It was the shots I heard that woke me up. Bam, bam. Tarika Jones, only 27 years old, was trying to build a better life for herself and her three young daughters. She was studying to become a dental assistant and shared her love for her kids on social media, where she rarely mentioned her on-again, off-again boyfriend, Kevin Reynolds. Their relationship had been abusive and volatile for years, and in February 2016, it reached a deadly peak. Two lives lost to domestic violence, three more lives forever changed. And tonight, ABC7 has learned the man blamed for the brutal crime should have been behind bars. One night, Kevin attacked Tarika while dropping off their child, dragging her to the ground and threatening her with a gun. Police arrested him, charging him with first-degree assault. Tarika, torn between fear and financial struggles, made a decision that would seal her fate. She went to court to say she wasn't afraid of Kevin anymore and bailed him out of jail with a $20,000 bond. Just five days later, on March 7th, Kevin returned to her Chevrolet, Maryland apartment. Inside, Tarika was playing with her stepsister, Jaleesa Walls Harris, and her three daughters. Out of nowhere, Kevin knocked on the door, walked in with a gun, and started shooting. Tarika and Jaleesa were killed on the spot, slumped under the kitchen table, while the children, one of whom was Kevin's daughter, witnessed the horrific scene. Kevin Reynolds was locked up last week on charges of domestic violence. Yesterday, though, police say he shot and killed Tarika Jones and Jalisa Harris as several children watched in horror. Neighbors heard the gunshots and ran to help, 
Finding the women's lifeless bodies and the children crying in terror, police quickly identified Kevin as the killer, aided by a five-year-old who knew him by name. The next day, Kevin's body was found 100 miles away in Hanover County, Virginia, inside his car. He had shot himself in the head, ending the bloody rampage he had started. Less than a week before Kevin Reynolds murdered the mother of his child, Tarika Jones, and her sister, Jaleesa Harris, he was bailed out of jail by Jones herself. She did pay to have him um, removed from jail. Tonight, State's Attorney Angela Alsobrooks reviewing exactly how that could have happened. I wish we had kept him in jail. As we first reported yesterday, Reynolds was locked up March 1st, accused of brutally beating Tarika Jones, pointing a gun at her, making threats. He would still be locked up on a no bond status if Jones had not gone to Reynolds bond review and recanted her story of the assault. Jalisa, 22 years old, was a visitor that night, in the wrong place, at the wrong time. She had dreams of becoming a singer and had been preparing to audition for a performance of Aladdin. Tarika's friends and family were left shattered. Her mother had warned her about Kevin, calling him the devil. But Tarika, like so many survivors of abuse, struggled to break free. Now, her three daughters are left without a mother, haunted by the violence they witnessed. Well, the bottom line here, sadly, and it's hard to hear, is the victim in this case wanted to bring her boyfriend home, and six days later, that man took her life as well as the life of her sister. It's all happening in this third floor apartment here. People in this neighborhood still saddened, upset by what happened. Others saying it didn't need to happen. These were five chilling cases where boyfriends turned to murder over something as small as an argument. It leaves you questioning. How many people around us are capable of being pushed to such violence? The terrifying reality is that murder can strike anyone, anywhere. Safety is never promised, and as for who the next victim might be, only time will tell. So, what are your thoughts on these cases? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to smash that like button, hit subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss our next video.